Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a simple buckling analysis or in uh, ANSYS uh, eigenvalue buckling. So first you need to set up the problem as a static structural and define the geometry, the boundary condition, the force and everything, and then pass it to the buckling to determine the load factor, which is the ratio of the critical load to the uh, actual force that you're applying and uh, how the uh, object is going to basically buckle. So what you need is, as I said, as a static structural, you go here and we're going to make it simple using line elements here. So I go to the geometry here and you see here it says line bodies. I activate it just like what I did for truss. So I can use line bodies and then I, the structural steel is good for me. So I go ahead and create the part using a line and a cross section. So this part here is very similar to the truss, as I said. So we go to the XY plane, create a sketch, and this is going to be basically just a simple line that represents the beam or the column basically in this case and uh, here we give it the dimension for simplicity let's say just one meter okay and then um, we go ahead and um, apply a cross section but before that we need to convert it into uh, use basically the command here in concept and say lines from sketches because what you have is a sketch not a line yet it's a sketch right now so what you need to do is go to here and say line from sketches and apply to this sketch and then generate it so now what i have is a line body and then it needs a cross section so you go to concept and create a cross section and for simplicity again i'm gonna go with rectangular and the dimensions I will provide is going to be uh, basically 10 centimeters by uh, 5 centimeters. So I make it rectangular like this. And now that I have that cross section, I can apply it to this line body here. So our beam is going to be 1 meter tall and the cross section is 0.1 by 0.05. Now that the geometry is fixed, I'm going to go to mechanical to set up the fixture or the boundary conditions and the force. So first you need a mesh. Go ahead and create one, which is most probably going to be a rough mesh. So go ahead and uh, change the sizing and make sure it is finer mesh. So here you see the element is about four centimeters. So I make it like one centimeter and reapply the mesh here. And uh, then I will add my, um, so there are lots of different shapes of beams that you can, or columns that you can have for buckling. You can have simply supported, you can have one side fix, you can have one side and a pin on the other side and so on. So here I just use the uh, cantilevered version, which is basically one side fix and one side uh, free with the force. So I go and apply a fixed support on this end here. Okay, a vertical column with one side fixed in the ground and the other side is free to apply the force as I said and here. I apply a force in this direction and I define it as vector and let's say negative 5,000 newtons downward. Then here I can create, let's say, total deformation. And I can solve this problem or I cannot solve it here and go to the buckling and solve them both together. It's okay in both cases. Uh, so here the problem is uh, solved and as you can see this one here it is going to be basically the compression not the buckling because it's a static case here so I get out of here and then I go to the eigenvalue buckling and drop it under geom onto the uh, engineering data geometry model and solution I grab all of them and now I go to the buckling to uh, set it up and solve it.
So you see now it is considering the static case as a pre-stress case for here, and then all you need to add basically here under analysis setting, you say how many modes you want to find, right? How many eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and really the critical force is just the first mode. Uh, that's the minimum amount of force that it makes the uh, column to go sideways and become unstable. So I really need one mode here. I don't need more than one mode. And then you can look at the deformation of that mode. Okay, everything else is already set. So what you need to do is simply go ahead and solve it. Now, if we go here and look at the theoretical formula, this is the uh, moment of inertia, the minimum moment of uh, mo moment of section, really, that we have. So you have two moments. One is with 0.1 and 0.5 to the power 3. The other one is with 0.5 and 0.1 to the power 3. This is the minimum section moment that you have second moment. The E for structural steel is 2 E to the 11. The L is 1 meter. And K for the configuration where one end is fixed and the other end is free is 2. And the formula is pi squared EI over KL squared. So K is the length modifier, which is different for different uh, configurations, for different uh, boundary conditions. So the P critical that the theory will give you is going to be like um, 514 thousand newtons the load that we applied is 5000 so if it gives me a load factor of around 103 102 or so which i already tested and it gives me that means numbers are very close to each other and you see the number is 102605 so if i exactly plug in that number and compare right you can see that my theoretical number this one, 514,000, 514, and the number that ANSYS give me, 513,000, they are very, very close. And again, that number is this guy here, load multiplier, which is the real uh, the ratio of the critical load to this load that you applied. So if you multiply this 5,000 by this load factor, right, that should give you the critical load. So critical load from ANSYS is 513,000. The one from uh, real life is, uh, the not real life, sorry, I mean like the, um, uh, the theoretical calculation is that one. So if I say P critical minus answer divided by P critical, let's find a relative percentage of error. The error is less than 0.1%, right? So uh, that is the error. 0.15%, less than, way less than 1%. And that shows your calculation is relatively accurate, and you can always uh, change the mesh size and see if it changes your uh, load factor or load multiplier. And the other thing you can see is which direction it is bending. As you can see, it is bending in which direction, along the axis that it has the minimum moment, right? So about this line here, about this line that is going through the uh, middle of the shorter sides, the moment is minimal. The moment is this, this amount here. So it is going to bend over that axis. That's going to be your neutral axis. And you clearly can see that from here, right? You clearly see the bending is happening about this axis and not about this other one. So it's very clear how the bending is happening and the load multiplier. Okay, so hopefully this video was useful to you. I will see you in the next lecture.